All right there. First of all, a massive thank you to those of you who slipped up the back. <laughs> a special thank you to those of you who snuck up the strasser and uh, compensated by the uh, for the huge Patreon losses with one-off PayPal donations. Amazing. Oh, the scooter fund is getting there. I think I've got a, a rear... A rear... <laughs> too much backdoor stuff going on in this video already which is relevant oh it's it's the overdetermination i previously talked about this is just a a, a tsunami of uh, freudian slips and you'll see what i'm talking about when i get into the body of the video now now those of you who've been around my channel for far too long will know that I'm into conjuring. I quite like magic. I was sexually abused by a magician. It's weird that I smile. It's behind you. <laughs> You're going to like this. Not a lot. <laughs> oh, here's my magic wand. Oh, not that one. Etc. Etc. And it's funny. Because, well, I say funny. Uh, hideous. But I had a mate and he was also into conjuring when we were both about 11. But I went round his house one day. Do you remember those kind of like disasters of childhood when your identity is questioned and and things happen you just can't understand like we were both really into conjuring we were talking about it all the time pre-internet I mean, this was almost pre-photography <laughs> we had lithograph printed magazines and um i went around one day and he went i'm not into conjuring anymore and i was i was like what i couldn't believe it you know it's all we talked about and he said no my mum said there's too many weird people in it <laughs> And just one year later, it was behind me, etc. And and I used to go up into central London. I used to bunk school and go to Davenport's, which was a still there, a very well-known, famous, old, kind of pedo-infested magic shop in the Charing Cross Underground. And I also used to go to Alan Allen's, which was next to the Bonington Hotel on, Sa on uh, Savile Row. No, not Savile Row, Southampton Row. And uh, some very famous magicians used to hang around in there. There's this black geezer called Michael Vincent. And as another one of my magician friends, I'll tell you that story in a minute. He said about Michael Vincent, he just takes himself too seriously. But to start, to be able to go to that shop and just hang around for hours with like a pound to spend. You know, I wasn't a great big spender. Spend a little magic time with old dirty fingers. And But the likes of Michael Vincent would just do the most amazing conjuring for hours because they're narcissists and they're, they're performers and they're entertainers and you know they like making children smile anyway alan allen was this little weird midget he actually was a midget he was about four inches tall he used to stand on the desk and like sell his wares but he was a very famous escape artist i'd seen him on telly doing a doing like a straight jacket um, escape from a local paedophile prison. <laughs> no, he wasn't. He was hanging upside down on the Jim will fix it show. <laughs> anyway, he was a dirty little thing as well. I remember in there once, there's a magic trick called the paddles. When you've only got a pound, an English pound to spend, you buy things like the paddles. And they're quite cool. You flip them over and there's a two dots on one and none on the other. And you show both sides the same. You give it the old one off the magic wrist. <laughs> there's a theme here, isn't there? Give it the old one off the magic wrist and the, the spots jump across the paddles. The bloke who abused me, Martin the Magician, he had spots all over his face. Maybe too many paddles. Anyway, I took a mate up there once and I was like, uh, Alan, Alan, no, not like that. I was like, hey, Alan, Alan. <laughs> Weird. My dad's name was Alan. It was strange that this name, this bloke's name was Alan Allen. Um, so good they named him twice. For a man of such a diminutive stature, maybe it was just a... Uh, maybe he had midget parents and they knew so they thought well, name him twice and he's three and a half foot you know that's quite a tall bloke if you consider two of them and i was going alan 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 show show my friend robert the paddles and he went oh, all right then clearly hated me <laughs> a grubby little bloke he was dirty smelly suit nicotine stains i mean if you're a conjurer admittedly he was an escape artist but if you're selling magic tricks clean your dirty rotten fingernails and your scummy nicotine stains makes you sick to think about it he picked up these paddles off of his mess of a desk and they were covered in shit not like plop but grubby and i swear to you he cleaned them with his tongue he went he was going mm, and me and rob were just like oh like you know when you physically retreat <laughs> you manage it's almost like that's how i learned to levitate because without moving my feet i just sort of 
<laughs> flew away from him a bit. He was like, nah, I don't even want to do it. I don't want to show you that much of my, what is actually a very nice and healthy tongue compared to his knackered old 20 senior service and four bottles of rum a day or whatever. He was, nah. and uh, you know, it's like, I don't want to see this trick. Just Can you just stop cleaning the shit? Anyway, and then as he was doing it, I knew my mate Robert was just thinking, probably much like my other mate was thinking, nah, there's too many weird blokes in magic. Anyway... Amazingly, my interest survived all of that. You know, to this day, I buy the odd book. You know, I, I practice mentalism. I like it. I like doing that. Oh, I can predict all sorts of things. Mm. It's all just tricks. It's conjuring. It's not magic. Magic is the name we give to conjuring. It's a trick. You know it. So when I found this vi video that I'm going to show you, the shocking ignorance and stupidity of many people is a disaster for this planet. The, the, the lack of intellectual ability of the masses is continually surprising to me. This is a video knocked out by some Vatican um, Catholic. It's not the Vatican, but they call themselves the Vatican Catholics. And I went to their website and their agenda, apart from pushing the Catholic faith as, as pushed by the popes over centuries, that's what they say, but they're also, they've also got the ump with this other Catholic sect. They don't believe it's true. Oh, this isn't what the Jesus promised. It's all that kind of shit. However, they've made this video. Two things about this video I want to tell you before we watch it. The, the, the channel's got about 90,000 subscribers, <clears throat> which is shocking, alone. But this video's had two and a half million views. <laughs> two and a half million. After I watched some of it it's nearly three hours long and when you see the production quality you know there's a there's a what is an obviously scripted um uh, voiceover um and it's plenty of edits it's all synced with what he's saying you know time has been spent you know when you see the religious folks shaking their little money makers down in the town center they they work for that oh they put the time in oh when it comes to the god figure they effort will be made but nearly three hours. Now, bear that in mind when you realise what the content is. Well, I'm going to tell you anyway. What, what shocked me more than two and a half million views was when I started reading the comments. Because I thought, I'll leave a comment. I'll join the rest of the people just trolling them. Oh, no. Oh, no. Everyone agreed. Now, they might be ditching the negative comments. Probably are. But there's still too many people agreeing. Now, the video is about how magicians... Conjurers from Harry Houdini through Darren Brown. Darren Brown gets a proper spanking as well. Openly homosexual. <laughs> it says it. Um, David Copperfield, David Blank, all of them. All of them. You, you'll know many of the ones mentioned. They do their stuff not because they've practiced sleight of hand, misdirection, presentation and gimmickry. No, it's not that. It's not that that... Everyone knows that's what it is. No, it's the devil. Yeah. It, this is the work of demons. These people have sold their soul to the devil. So pick a card, any card. Thank, thank the devil for me being able to force that on you. It's just bizarre. And I'll, I'm going to show you a bit of it, and then we're going to have a look at the comments. So without further ado, let's see what the devil can do with a pack of cards. All right, here we go. I'll get it right back to the beginning so you can This magician in his... Hang on, shout out. So there you go. Magicians, oh, <laughs> in quotes, prove, they prove that a spiritual... I mean, that is a reach. He's using this. I mean, the full title, which you're missing under my border, is magicians... They're not my air quotes. There is quotes that I'm re-explaining. Magicians prove a spiritual world exists. I mean, oh, if you're questioning the Bible, you've only got to look at Paul Daniels. You've only got to look at Ali Bongo. <laughs> <You've> <laughs> What's his name? The geezer that died on stage, but literally didn't just have a bad night. Tommy Cooper. I mean, if you need to know that the Lord exists, just take a look at Tommy Cooper just like that. I'm going to fuck you up the bum, Chris. Anyway, magicians prove a spiritual world exists. Demonic. Demonic activity caught on video. New edition. Surprised that's not three brackets. Parentheses. Here we go. By brother Michael Demond. Let's go. 
This video will be an exam Oop. examination of some of the world's top magicians. Almost everyone believes that the best magicians in the world only use incredibly quick sleight of hand to perform their quote tricks. Many have the impression that the top magicians are just so good at what they do. I mean, that idiot from America's Got Talent clearly didn't turn a, a two-dimensional paper pizza into a pink dove <laughs> using a prop. Oh no, Satan himself that there's a natural explanation for their performances, even if we can't see it or figure it out. In other words, most believe that there must be a non-spiritual explanation. Yes, Dynamo was on ropes because that's how you lift someone up above the shard. This is crazy already. For all the apparent signs and wonders magicians perform. I mean, fair play to him. We all know he's on ropes, but that must have been frightening as fuck. Not for me. Not for me being suspended above the shard. Went for dinner in the shard once, so lovely. They forgot to bill us for the main course. We got billed for two desserts. Sweet, quick run. <laughs> I was trying to impress a girl. She wasn't so impressed when she went, oh, we, we better tell him. I was like, shut up. <laughs> Never saw her again. Well, didn't want to. This may be the correct conclusion for some of the qu the work of Lucifer there. Magic that people generally see. There are other magic acts that clearly go beyond the laws of nature. But he doesn't know how people do magic tricks. It must be the devil. I mean, if you don't know, if you can't be bothered to go online and, I don't know, Google how did so-and-so do that, it's got to be the devil. Oh, it's the work of Satan. Here is a young magician that can make CDs instantly appear. He will also change their size, shape, and color. Shapeshifter. Notice that the magic show he performs on is blasphemously called, quote, God Hands 2. <laughs> Blasphemous. <laughs> what do you think? I mean, am I wrong? Is that the work of the devil, or is it just a magic trick? Satan. This geezer's very famous and very good. Devil? I don't think so. For example, there is no way without supernatural assistance that cards can instantly appear in someone's hands out of thin air. <laughs> what doesn't he get? There is. It's called practice. He's doing his, 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 their movements that you don't know about that have been perfected over decades by many different conjurers and that's how he does it. Because you haven't studied it, because you don't know about it, you think this bloke sat down in a pentagram and asked the devil to show him how to manipulate cards, you lunatic. Here. But as you can see... That is exactly what is happening. <laughs> oh, because that's what it looks like. That must be what it is. He's missed something central about conjuring here, hasn't he? Yet most will still insist, despite the clear evidence to the contrary, that these magic acts do have an explanation that doesn't require the supernatural to be involved. Oh. 2.2 million views. They will say that being this good at magic is only the result of a tremendous amount of hard work which has enabled them to perfect their craft. But th oh, this is actually amazing. I mean, if you know this one, anyone can do this. You just have to be able to sit, stand in a very awkward way. But check out the terrified children. That can't be the real explanation for how these individuals <laughs> are able to perform this kind of magic. I was on a journey once with my brother. We went to Skegness for a couple of weeks to stay with some friends of my mum. And uh, I had these uh, balls steady. <laughs> the theme continues. I had these multiplying balls. And it's a lot of balls and they're shells. So you can just keep making them appear. And then you can make them come out your mouth endlessly. I mean, I'd obviously done a deal with the devil to make this, uh, to make this ability, to have this ability. There was a couple of old ladies sitting behind us. And I turned around, like 11 years old, just a kid, trying to... I, I look, look, Granny, I'll do... I was like, making these balls come out my mouth. And she went, stop it, that's disgusting. 
<laughs> Not that I, I didn't. I didn't read about that in the book. Didn't say. Didn't explain that result. It was talking about people being amazed and bewildered and entertained. No, oh, stop it. That's disgusting. My brother was cracking up. I wasn't. I was uh, traumatized. Ah, oh, this is this is Michael Vincent, the bloke that used to hang around in Alan Allen's, who takes himself too seriously. Oh, that story, by the way, is quite a cool one. So I was working for the business that I still work for years and years and years ago, and I'd already watched an industry video, one of Darren Brown's that went around the industry. Oh, you can't buy this in the shops. Oh, we wait 28 days for delivery, etc. And there was a move in it called Mike's Move. And it was a weird sort of, it was a pass. There's a thing called a pass. I won't go into it too long or you'll all turn off. But you turn the deck over and as you turn it over, you cut it. But people don't know, so you can control a card from the top to the bottom, all this shit. And it was called Mike's Move and it was named after a bloke called Mike. And then one day I was going through the orders and I'd got an order from Mike at, oh, I don't want to dox him, Mike at his magic company name. So I kind of went off piste and I wrote to him, separate to work, and I said, you're not the Mike from Mike's move, are you? And he wrote back to me and went, oh, yeah. Oh, and we're still friends today. And I taught him how to pick locks and he teaches me magic tricks. It's a lovely, lovely friendship. He set up a YouTube channel. Actually, I might do a review of it. It's kind of cool. He restores axes. Michael Vincent, speak. Do the devil's deeds. Even in this day and age, they still think magicians use their sleeves. So all you do is cast a spell. Oh, good, though. Let's have one more look at that. Look at that change. Oh, yeah, colour change. Top card colour change. This day and age, they still think magicians use their sleeves. So all you do is cast a spell. And there's the ace of heart. They could only perform these signs and wonders with the assistance of spiritual forces. <laughs> or a very elaborate stage illusion prop costing thousands of dollars. As we will see, this has even been admitted by the top magicians. In this video, I will provide overwhelming evidence that most of the top magicians, whether they know it or not, are possessed and that they are certainly assisted by demons or fallen angels. <laughs> That's a weird angle, whether they know it or not. Well, hang on. They've either sold their soul to the devil to get these, these skills, these abilities, and in the afterlife, they're fucked because the devil's got their soul. Or what, he just gave it to them? To fool Catholics. Is that what you're saying? And like I say, this is nearly three hours. He goes on and on. I've got to get to the Darren Brown stuff. Hang on. Oh, yeah, this is quite funny. Check this out. Look. Listen Special to what he says. Power. Right, listen. This, this trick, you buy it. You buy it. It's a coin that you pretend to buy it in half. It's a prop. It's going to cost you $5 from any magic shop. Alan Allen's isn't there anymore. Davenport's will do you good. International Magic on Clark and Well. Listen to what he says. Souls to the devil. In return, the devil gave not Chris Angel them special power, but. fame, and fortune in this world. Assistance from the devil and demons is the way these top magicians have acquired these special quote magic skills. No, five dollars from a magic shop which makes them different from regular magicians who aren't necessarily receiving spiritual intervention. <laughs> what does he mean? The crap ones. Let's find Darren Brown. Hang on. Oh, he loves the mask changes. Ancient Japanese art of face changing, of swapping masks rapidly. Goes back centuries. It's the work of the devil. Because he can't work it out, it's the work of the devil. Watch this. Juan is considered to be the best face changer in the world. And he is amazing. Literally decades of practice. For example, in one of his three-minute performances, he changed his face 60 different times. It's quite obvious from looking at different performances by Quan that he could change his face 500 different times in three minutes. Take a look at this guy. He doesn't even touch his face. Wow. It's almost like, I don't know, it's on some kind of elasticated reel or something. Notice how every single time he changes his, quote, mask. His, quote, mask. <laughs> it is placed perfectly on his face. Well, it would be a bit of a rubbish trick if it was sort of slightly skew whiff, wouldn't it, you prat? Covering his eyes and nose every single time. 
Kwan also said that the man who taught him this secretive practice was destined to teach him face changing. Oh, the work of the devil for sure. Nothing about, no, not just self-promotion and the mystery of someone's heritage. Kwan went on to say that he was taught face changing in only three days. Kwan and other face changers will even interact with the audience and change their I would not want to interact say that he with that audience member check him out was taught face changing in only three days Quan and other face changers will even interact with the audi oh. audience and change their face right in front of them Quan spoke about one of his shows in which three cameras were set up to record his performance scientific the cameramen were attempting to discover how he makes the rapid changes. A great, a great act, but not the devil. Come on, Darren Brown. Look, it shows you how much of this nonsense I watched. And I was transfi absolutely transfixed by it. I mean, the, again, he loves David Copperfield. As far as he's concerned, he's, he's pretty much Satan himself. And he picks these bizarre quotes out of nowhere and like strings them all together. And of course, the result is the same every time. Magic is the devil's work. Come on, where's DB? Hello. I hope you're all having a good 2009. Ah, look at me trying to pad time with chatter. <laughs> like a 1980s radio show host. Now we're having some slight technical difficulties here at the moment. Um, well, <laughs> last night, where I in, in Norfolk, there was a storm. And uh, Mrs. Betsy Rowland wrote in and she said, My car... <laughs> here we go. Oh, posters from the past had demons on them. Equals Lucifer. Come on, he's round here. Dell Boy's around here. Here we go. Check this out. I really like Darren Brown. Met Darren Brown at a party in oh, Clerkenwell as well. One of my good friends, Ivan Masso. Bang, drop that bomb. Bang, drop it. He invited him to his party and I got a little bit starstruck. I had a little chat with him though, but being an open homosexual and with my history of magicians, I, I, I moved away backwards with my hands tucked in behind more than sorcerers used by the devil. This is a modern magic book called Tricks of the Mind. It's a book written by Darren Brown, a famous current European magician and hypnotist. Brown, an open homosexual... <laughs> oh, no! ...is pictured on the cover. Notice the incredible similarity to what we just saw over and over again. It's almost like they're both magicians. It's almost like as if they're part of the same canon of performers. In the poster ads of famous magicians from the last century. Demons on the cover next to the ear giving information. Here is an ad for one of Brown's performances. Notice the demons right near him again whispering information into his ear. The demons give the magicians the information. Brown's 2005 tour show was called, quote, something wicked this way comes. No sense, no sense of irony here. No sense of the deliberate reference. It's just, there's so many people out there with no, no ability to understand anything. It's that simple. It's terribly worrying. Ignorance is universal. For his 2011 and 2012 Svengali tour, Brown proclaimed the, quote, wonders of the occult. Yes, deliberately, because that's what magicians in the past used to do to try and whip their audience, their then-believing audience, into some kind of weird frenzy. Darren Brown 100% outlines how he does his tricks through, through a, a combination of misdirection, presentation, and trickery. Not the occult. He's made the, the his poster looks like ye olde magician. Deliberately. Brown produced a small book for the tour which he currently sells. Brown also depicts himself with a devil's tail. It, it's, it reminds me of all the Illuminati nuts. I've seen many of those videos. I sit and watch them transfixed where they're like, oh, there's Illuminati symbols everywhere. Here's a star. Look, it's in that car wheel. Oh, it's over there. It's over there. Oh, look, the golden arches. Is... Yes, 
there are triangles, circles, stars and squares throughout our culture. It, this is not some tapestry of magical symbolism. Brown also sold a video of his different tricks, which he called, quote, the devil's picture. Another reference. Book. As just stated, Darren Brown is well known throughout the world for his. It's on a wire. His magic. He is also known for conducting things like seances. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Look, it goes on for another. Fucking two and a half hours let's have a look at some of the comments here we go this is the best most complete video of demon magicians i live in vegas so i've seen them all and it is real someone wrote that yeah I went to a David Copperfield show years ago. The show was beyond belief. <laughs> you'd hope so. That's what you'd want from a magic show. At the end of the performance, David went to, to the exit to greet people as they were leaving. When it came to our time to speak to him, I was completely bothered. <laughs> I was completely bothered with the ways his eye the ways ways his eyes looked. They were solid black, almost as if he was outside in the dark, so his pupils would open to take in more light. There was no colour change. How close did you get to Mr. Copperfield? There was no colour change to distinguish the pupil from the iris. It was as if the eyes were a shiny marble. <laughs> I have never seen anyone... I have never seen this on anyone before, and I have not met anybody since that has eyes like this. Amazing that after all these years have gone by and it stays with me. If these magicians are so powerful, instead of boosting their egos by impressing people or enriching their bank accounts, why don't they use their skills for something useful, like finding cures for diseases or otherwise benefiting mankind? Yeah, David Blaine, if you can manage to move a card from the top of the pack to the bottom without anyone seeing it, why aren't you out there sorting out AIDS? Yeah, this is awesome. I've been to a David Copperfield show years ago when he was levitating a woman. She broke out of her trance in midair. She began growl. She began growling and writhing around in the air. Oh, <laughs> it's a little bit sexy, isn't it? <laughs> her body was jerking all over. I've come. Her body was jerking all over while she was still in the air as he was trying to float her around. David looked upset as if he didn't have control of the situation. He had to quickly lower her and dismiss her. He was clearly unhappy that the trick did not go well. He quickly apologised and then moved on to the next act. Or is it is the devil helping him or not there? Or did he just fuck it up? Or did you not understand that it was meant to look like it went wrong and that she had a spear go through her? Oh, I don't know. Hence Lucifer. Yeah, this isn't your usual pulling a habit out of a hat trick. Something else is definitely going on. These are magicians in the biblical sense. Sorcerers. A high price to pay for fame, but Hollywood has thousands of them. They sell their soul to the devil. Sad. Can't imagine. <laughs> if you honestly believe that people could sell their souls to the devil... I'd guess it would be a little bit more than sad. I mean, sad, sad is alcoholism, not selling your soul to the devil. These sad souls don't know what they're giving up just to be famous during this very short life on earth. Their afterlife will be horrible. What? Darren Brown and David Blaine, David Copperfield, Ali Bongo, Paul Daniels. Their afterlife will be horrible. <laughs> Can you imagine all that lot in hell? And full of regrets they won't be able to get rid of. Imagine an eternity of suffering and torments. I can imagine being with magicians for eternity and that, yes, would be hell-like. They will hate themselves beyond measure. If they do not realise what they've done and repent, it's hell. After seeing this video, it is impossible to say that the spiritual world does not exist. <laughs> Who? Who thinks like that? It's a lot of ignorance and bad will of the atheists, mainly. The fool, ha the fool hath said in his heart there is no God. Per Psalm 13.1 A great video, man. I've been telling people David Blaine and Chris Angel have been working for the devil for years and nobody believes me. Talk about false miracles. This video definitely is an eye-opener. This video definitely speaks volumes. It's definitely true. These magicians are demonic. 
They are evil and sorcerers the Bible warned us about. God help us all. <laughs> they just want to show off some card. Take a card, any card. What the devil's in my fingers. Seeing this stuff has made me made my belief and faith for my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ more stronger. It is really deep stuff when you think about this. Think what powers our Creator has when demons do this stuff. God bless you all. A clear indication that magicians can work their magic and are possessed by the devil is in Genesis. When Pharaoh wouldn't let the Egyptians go, God punished Pharaoh. The magicians mocked God and tried to repeat what he did, but they did not have the same power as God, said intellectual powerhouse Tonya Patterson. This, hang on, let me get this here. This is unspeakable and very eye-opening. I gave my son a magic kit. <laughs> I go up from Alan Allen's. I gave my son a magic kit when he was very young and pray that God forgives me. I, I had no idea. This is very upsetting because the devil is bold and letting you know he is real. If you don't believe in our Heavenly Father Jesus, then I don't know what to say. You have been shown the devil. Why can't you believe in our Heavenly Father? Hell is real and you better know that heaven is real too. You better wake up and decide where you want to spend eternity. I declare that hell was not built for me. The most astonishing documentary I ever saw on the subject. Thanks. Your research is simply amazing. Very gifted in your ability to produce this. God clearly helped you make this. Praise God. Way to go, buddy. Did you see how terrified those children were in that video? <laughs> yeah. You can see their reactions. They understand this for what it is. True. Many who study and practice the occult end up possessed after the demon has oppressed them. Highly demonic and witchcraft behaviour. The best presentation on this subject I've ever seen. Strange. At the time of my viewing, over six and a half thousand views, but only one comment mm, makes you think. Right, well, there's one I want to get to. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Here we go, last one. I spoke to a person that witnessed Copperfield after his performance in Las Vegas come out of the casino and fly away. Oh, really? Thanks for watching.